two tricky examples of limits at infinity. I've got a limit as x goes to minus infinity of this expression, and I want to know how to emulate what we were doing with rational functions. The, the idea there to do it carefully was to divide by powers of x top and bottom. And what that ended up doing for limits at infinity with, with ordinary rational functions is it, it seemed to indicate a cover-up method was appropriate. That if you just cover up everything but the, the leading term on the top and bottom, then you get square root of x squared over x. Hmm. Is that one? Is that correct? Well, let's see. Let's do it carefully and see what happens. So, what we want to do is we want to multiply by the same power of x, top and bottom. On the bottom, it's 1 over x, because that's going to neutralize this guy to be a finite, which is great, and it's going to turn that into 5 over x, which is, which is going to 0. So, therefore, we want that to be 1 over x on the top. Okay. Now, it turns out we're going to modify that a little bit, but what would that get us? On the bottom, it's 1 plus 5 over x. On the top, we have to be real careful. You might think this is just going to come in and be x squared minus 2x over x, but it's going inside a square root. Okay, So let me put down here a little separate calculation. The square root of what equals 1 over x? Because when we put inside a square root, we're write, rewriting it as the square root of something. OK, well, let's actually do a simpler, simpler one first. The square root of what is equal to x? Well, most people answer that quite quickly, and they say, oh, that's the square root of x squared that's equal to x. That's most of the right idea, that when the x goes in, it's going to square to undo the fact that I'm putting it inside a square root. So it seems like maybe over here, that's the right answer. Unfortunately, both of these are slightly wrong. Let's look at x being a negative number. For example, let's see if I can squeeze this in. I think I can. The square root of minus 3 squared is the square root of 9. That's 3. By definition, the square root is a positive number. Once you've squared this, there's no way for it to remember magically. When you say square root of 9, it doesn't remember that that 9 came from a minus 3 squared. It's just the square root of 9, period. That's 3. Okay. If you just ask somebody what's the square root of 9, it's 3. And you, you'd have to tell somebody, oh, no, 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 I meant this. Well, the square root doesn't, doesn't have any way to remember that. So whether or not this is negative, the square root of 3 squared is the same as the square root of minus 3 squared. It's both 3. Oh, hey, that's the absolute value of minus 3. And indeed, that's the trick. That's the, the true value of the square root of x squared. It's actually always, always, always equal to absolute value of x, which, of course, if we write it out explicitly, as a piecewise function, it's either x or minus x. And that's going to be important in a minute. Similarly here, you have to put a 1 over absolute value of x here. That's a true fact. Without the absolute values, it's just not a true fact. Now, that's never going to trip you up if x is positive. But look at what we're doing here. We're taking the limit as x goes to minus infinity. So I'd really like to rewrite that 1 over x inside here as a 1 over x squared, and then do some algebra with that. I can't do that. Um, and be correct when x is a negative number. So I go back to the very start and I say, you know, who brought in that 1 over x in the first place? I brought that in. And this is seeming, seems to be maybe what I should bring in on the top. OK. Well, then I better bring in the same thing on the bottom. OK. Now the top's going to work better. OK. This I'm going to have to modify in a little bit. But the top's going to work better. This is going to be the square root. This is going to become a 1 over x squared. That's going to come in here underneath. And that's going to simplify in a nice way. But what, hap what do I have to do here? This is not, this, I had this as 1 over x before. It's not 1 over x anymore. It's 1 over absolute value of x. So that's where this comes in and rescues me. If I didn't know what sign x was, this would be a real pain, because I, I just couldn't simplify it, or I'd have to break it up into cases. But look at this. I do know what sine x is. The sine of x is negative. It's going to minus, it's minus a million, minus a billion. It's definitely a negative number. And so I can replace, rewrite this as a negative. Okay, So that I can immediately rewrite as a negative. If you want, you can actually put it in as 1 over absolute value of x and minus 1 over x right at the start. I often put it in as the same exact thing, top and bottom right at the first. 
and then I say, okay, I'm going to use this fact about one of our absolute value of x on the top, and I'm going to use this fact on the bottom. Now what that does is says, oh, our original calculation was almost correct, but there's a minus sign there. Now I'm good to go because the top has turned into 1 minus 2 over x square rooted. The bottom is 1 minus the quantity uh, minus the quantity 1 plus 5 over x. This goes to 0, this goes to 0, and I get minus 1. Let's see if the cover-up method would have given us the right answer. Well, the cover-up method would have told us to just pretend it's the same thing as limit x goes to minus infinity of square root of x squared over x. Now, if you're, if you're forgetting this fact, then you would still get the wrong answer, because you'd say that's x over x that goes to 1. But the cover method actually still does work here, if you remember that that's absolute value of x, and that since x is negative, this is getting kind of cluttered. I should have started a new page. It's OK. That's minus 1. Minus 1. That's a minus sign there. So the cover method actually still works here, but you have to be very, very careful about it. And given that when you start using a cover-up method, you're, you're telling your subconscious this problem is going to be easy and quick and with no tricks, it's pretty dangerous because your subconscious is going to assume there isn't anything tricky like that. So most people would encourage you to do it the careful way, especially if you want to really convince somebody. Because the cover-up method, it, it's really hard to just say anything but, well, my teacher told me, or I think it works. Now let's start another one. I might need to finish it on another video. I'm going to go back to plus infinity because I don't want to combine two complicated issues together. Alrighty, here's one that uh, I introduced in class and we did, we did experimentally and I, I told you that if you if you use the cover-up method naively, it's very tempting to say, hey, that's the kind of thing I was just covering up. I was just taking this 2x and covering it up, and it didn't seem to matter. So why don't I just cover that up? And I get square root of x squared. Well, now that's it. That is x, because x is positive. Minus x. Oh, maybe that goes to 0. Um, or if you're really aggressive about covering up, maybe you think you want to cover up both of those guys. And uh, oh, then maybe it goes to infinity. Well, neither is true. There's no variety of cover-up method that works for this problem. And so that's where you have to be really careful. The cover-up method really works in particular specific cases where it's like rational functions or quotients like this, even if there's a square root, but you have to be really careful about signs. But there's some places where it simply does not work. Here, we have to be, do some really clever algebra. People tend to get really caught up, or, you know, the people that tend not to do well on problems like this there's a lot of stuff to pay attention to. But the first piece of algebra, even though it's not the simplest piece of algebra we've ever seen, is something we've done before. You take this thing and you write it as a fraction. You can always do that with any number by writing it as over 1. And then you rationalize the numerator. So again, that's kind of perverse. You know, up till a few weeks ago, you never heard of rationalizing a numerator. And here, we didn't even realize it was a numerator until I wrote it in this weird way as a fraction. But it turns out, we'll give you a little, the 30 second spiel on what's happening here. It turns out that if you write this, kind of what's going on, this is like infinity minus infinity. When x is big, that's a big number. The square root is still big. When x is big, x is big, obviously. So this is like big number minus big number. It turns out, for pretty subtle reasons, that that kind of infinity minus infinity, that kind of undetermined kind of form, is harder to deal with than infinity over infinity, which is all of the other limits that we've been doing uh, in the last day or so. This guy is big number over big number. And exactly how big? Oh, this one is about nine minus of that one, surprisingly enough. It turns out that's easier. And it's a, it's a basic fact of nature um, that I don't think we have time to really justify carefully. So let me just do the next step, tidy it up a little bit. In fact, I'm just going to leave it right here and split it here and do the rest on another video.